Yo, what's up, YouTube? This is your boy, Alex. I'm back. We're finally inside the house where I like to feel more comfortable filming when I'm not filming on multiple locations. Now, I want to apologize to the men and the women in the last video because I was trying to get that video to be between 20 to 22, maybe 23 minutes. It actually went to almost being a 30 minute video because we had an idiot in the alley that was trying to use the excuse of him was trying to clean up the um, alley and the rule is if you're going to if you're going to clean the alley, you're supposed to have a key to open the gate on the side to get to the alley to clean the alley. You know, and I'm like, you know, get out of here before I call the police. You know, you interrupted me while I'm filmmaking. And that's the, that's why I like to film at multiple locations, like at Beverly Hills and at the Groves Park and sometimes inside the house because I'm free from distractions and I'm free from people interrupting me because when people interrupt your videos, they do it intentionally on purpose. Like they see that you're busy and they want to bother you for something that's not that important. Like if it's not, if it's not involved being um something important then it's like get out of here you know you know you interrupted me and i have to apologize to my audience because when y'all see this go um live or pre-recording you're gonna be like man who is he talking to you know there's a guy in the alley and i'm trying to tell him you got to have a key you know in other words i'm not gonna let you i'm not gonna let you in i'm not gonna let you out when i don't know who you are you know, he didn't understand, so I had to kind of, like, cut the camera off and tell him, if you don't leave, I'll call the police on you. you know, I don't want to do that. It's the beginning of the year. The year hasn't even barely started. We haven't even got to the best part of January, and here we already got an idiot who, who, who you know, ain't playing with a full deck of cards. So I apologize to my audience, because when you watch that video, you're going to be like, who is Alex talking to? It's a guy that, you know, he claimed he's cleaning up the alley. Like, you ain't cleaning up no alley. You on drugs. You on crack. It's like, it's like, get out of here before I call the police. So I apologize that y'all had to hear that on camera. It's not that you didn't hear it on camera. It's the fact that you look at my facial expression because I was trying to finish the video and get to the second video, which you're watching right now. And this guy was interrupting me and I was like, don't interrupt me while I'm filmmaking. You know, and what he was asking for didn't make any logical sense. He like, he like, I could barely hear him speak. And the way he was talking, you can tell he had too much to drink. So it's like, get out of here before I call the police. This one is with no further interruption. This one's going to be called Sex Game Black Men and Women Billionaires Boys Club. Oh, yeah. We're going to talk about the black multi-billionaires up in here. Why? Because for years and for years, people have asked me, when are you going to make the video? You know, you a black man, when you gonna make the video for black men and black women, when you gonna make that video? And I said, give me about a year, two or three years to put the list together to see if it's gonna come out right, and I'll make the video. Now there's there's now I did check the list. There's only 14 black billionaires, but um I have to research them and some of them I'm gonna I'm gonna wait and make another video about them and I have to learn more about their history because one of the things with making these types of videos is that they're hits and they're misses. That means the video can strike a chord with the audience. Sometimes the video could fail expectations and underperform because I have done some videos like this um, in the past and they didn't turn out very good. So the title of the video is going to be called Sex Game Black Men and Women Billionaires Boys Club for women and for men. This video is gender neutral. Anyone can watch this video, black or white, young or old, men and women. This video is for anyone to watch. And of course, if you're a black man or a black woman, you're going to want to watch this video because it's a video you've been waiting for for quite some time. It was almost going to get done last year, but the list came out way too short. And I didn't want to put this on camera and then produce this and upload it to YouTube. And then y'all watch it and go, man, he gave us a crap video. I told y'all. Do you want me to give you the best of the best content or do you want me to give you crappy videos? Crappy videos is when you just jump outside and just do a video at random and then upload and then it doesn't do what you expected to do. A video where you actually sit down and plan and thaw out your ideas and put them on paper and see if they match up is a well-planned, organized video. So we're trying to you know, do that inside this house. All right, coming in at number nine is Isa, Isabella de Dizzy Santola Satantia. Sorry if I butcher her last name. She's African. 
Um, she's from the native of Africa. She's from an African tribe who is a real accomplished black woman, okay? Besides Oprah, because everybody says Oprah's the only woman that's a billionaire, there's actually more than just Oprah. And she's like the first ever African woman in Africa to become a multi-billionaire. Like, this woman's no joke. This woman's got like two or three college degrees, business management, business illustrator. She's a big-time executive of her company. She's bought real estate. And whenever Oprah comes to Africa, she's one of the ladies that get to sit down and gets to discuss business dealings with, with, with Oprah Winfrey. This woman's big time. This woman's got big bank. This woman um, has got a company in Africa. She's got a company in the United States. This woman um, is the only one who can take her spending power and go to other countries and make two or three deals at a time with success. And the fact that nobody knows that she's the first ever African black woman to be a multi-billionaire is kind of like, it's kind of like sad because she's been around for like two to three decades. And this woman is even gone to high schools and colleges in the U.S. and outside the U.S. to kind of teach people how to make the kind of money she make one day in the future. Like the idea to make schools in Africa she was one of the people that Oprah Winfrey went to go talk to and figure on how you actually get that done. So, yeah, this woman's big time. This woman can get phone calls from Michelle Obama, Barack Obama, Oprah Winfrey, because she's on that level. This woman can get uh, phone calls from those people. You know, this woman can come to the United States and if she wanted to, she could buy a, a Baskin Robbins with the type of money. She could buy like four or five Baskin Robbins um, if she wanted to. She could buy a hair salon if she wanted to. And she's good because she has built schools. She's built roads with her money. Um, and she's not afraid to go into a room with other business executives that are men and do a deal. She, do, she does deals on a consistent daily basis. Like this is somebody that you want in your corner. Like if you wanted to buy a piece of land, she's the one you would go to because she knows how to do it. And she's been doing it for such a long time that she's trained people to come back between Africa and America to do just that. She's good. Like she knows how to even manufacture her products. Like she starts selling some stuff and that turned out to be a good investment for her. So she's good at investing her money in what she does. Whatever she wants, she's going to invest and it's going to it's going to it's going to turn into gold. It's just unfortunate. A lot of people do not know who she is. All right, coming in at number eight is Fotosuka Azaseska. She's also African, but she was reside in the United Kingdom. And she is also a black woman that is a multi-billionaire. And she greatly gets compared to that of Oprah Winfrey because she kind of got into television and film, news journalists. Um, I mean, she did get ties to it, but what she's really known for is being a business executive. And she had ties in, and she had ties into the entertainment industry in America. And basically, she is kind of on the same level as Oprah. A lot of people don't realize that she's on the same level. Like she's on that level, like whatever she wants. Like, you, you know how Oprah has cable television channels in America? Well, in the United Kingdom, she kind of owns some cable channels herself. Not just cable channels, she actually owns a building in the United Kingdom. I don't know how true it is because I have to do further more research. So don't be angry or upset because these were names that came up when I researched them five times. These are the ones that say they're most successful, so it's impossible to sit down and read all this information and make sure it's legit, because information on the internet, it changes, so you got to be careful what you put on the internet, because if it's not 100% accurate, people will get angry and upset. That was a problem that I had last year in 2020. I made two or three videos that my best friend took a look at who's also my producer, and he told me some of the information I said was old and outdated and not up-to-date and current, so don't pick on me. It's not easy putting this stuff together. The names come up. This is what I get. So before y'all start saying, what about Jay-Z and Kanye West, we will work our way up to that. I'm trying to get you the ones that y'all don't know. 
because you know y'all don't know these people i didn't even know these people were were multi-billionaires and they were black so you know give me a break don't don't pick on me too much um i didn't even know but she she's big time you know she, anything oprah can do she can do just as much all right, coming in at number seven is David Stewart. Now, I heard the name in the 1990s when I was going to church. Back when my dad made me go to church a lot, um, I heard the name come up. I heard that he was a black billionaire, and that's all I knew about the guy. I had no idea that this guy had real estate, that this guy had graduated from college with a bachelor's degree. This guy got like two college degrees. He has his own company. He became an entrepreneur, and then he got into the business real estate, and this guy's got property, and this guy, I think, became one of the few black billionaires that could get a, a loan and be able to get his money back from a loan. And then I think down south and on the West Coast, he's very well known. Like he's gone to places like developed cities because he's from Chicago. And he came up with the idea to fix and develop certain parts of Chicago and make Chicago's infrastructure better um, than what it could be. Um, so we have that. And then we have coming in at number six is Oprah Winfrey, another 